Hey, hey everyone. So today's five minute rounds is one of the most interesting hematology blood smear cases I've ever had. In fact, we're in the process of writing it up for publication because it's so cool. So I want you to get excited. <laughs> uh, this is a seven year old pit bull that actually, I have limited clinical history on this one where I found out that she had present, presented to her vet because she was walking funny and the owners were convinced that the neighbors poisoned her. So it's always the neighbors, right? Always the neighbors. But when she had her physical exam done, she was noted to have ataxia, so it was neurologic. And they went ahead and did a CBC and we can see that there is a mild anemia. She does have a mild lymphopenia, so that lymphopenia is very likely stress. She um, does have a decreased platelet count, so her platelet count, her automated platelet count was 70,000 per microliter and the estimate based on the review of the smear supported that, that it did look decreased. So she has a thrombocytopenia, which ties in well with what we ended up seeing on the smear. So with no further ado, let's take a look at the smear. So this is uh, at 10x and we can, we can definitely see that there's increased white space between the red blood cells. So we know that there is a an anemia present, but the anemia is really not a big part of this case. We also can tell that there aren't a lot of platelets. It's a little hard to see from back here, but we're going to get closer and that corroborates that automated thrombocytopenia. So just at first glance, you know, nothing really exciting. Just some red cells, you know, a little bit of uh, spikiness to the edges of some of these red cells that makes them echinocytes, which are not very exciting. So, you know, you're just kind of cruising around, like minding your own business and then Wham! What in the world are those? Guys, <laughs> those are not supposed to be in a blood smear. Uh, I hope you can see those uh, okay. I think it actually gets a little blurry when I go to 100x. So I don't think I really need to because I think you can see them pretty well. But can you see these bugs in this animal's blood smear? When I saw this, I thought, what in the world? So I actually have heard about this. I've read about it when I was studying for board. So I did know what it was, but I was just like, I can't believe I'm seeing this. So I'm going to tell you what it is in just a second. But notice how these guys are in this big tangled group here. I'm going to cruise around a little bit more to find some more of them that are hopefully not quite as tangled. So you might be able to see their individual morphology a bit better. Oh, there's another nice tangled group. Oh my goodness. They're so cool. So cool. Um, Again, I'm going to try to look around and see if I can find any that aren't in a dense tangled group. But these guys, if you notice their morphology, they have a, they're pretty long and they are, it's probably the best we're going to get because they really, there's so many of them, they really like to get tangled up together. But here you can see a couple, I think there's two there, but you can see that undulating or spirochete look that they have where they, they, are sort of like worms and those are spirochetes so why in the world would we have these extracellular spirochetes circulating in the blood oh, there's a really nice one by itself all by myself so sad all by himself so beautiful example of that spirochete look where you can even make out those little tapering edges at the end so this actually, there's a couple different types of spirochetes that you can find um, uh, in the body, like that animals can be infected with, but there's only really one that we associate with seeing in high numbers in the blood, and that is a Borrelia species associated with relapsing fever, which is a particular type of Borrelia that we can see associated with this this condition called relapsing fever, which obviously can cause fever. And um, thrombocytopenia is very common and they actually can present with neurologic signs. So this animal had those, which is really cool when all that adds up. And this is not our other kind of more common Borrelia species like Lyme disease um, uh, or, yeah, so like Lyme disease or lepto. Those are types of spirochetes, but they are not going to be seen in high numbers on the blood by any means. You probably won't ever see them at all, but they're definitely not going to be everywhere. So this is consistent with relapsing fever. A PCR test was done to confirm that and confirm the species. And um, this patient was put on doxycycline and recovered completely within 10 days, which is amazing. So this is commonly seen in Texas, but this dog was actually from Florida. And so it can be seen in Florida as well. So keep an eye out for that if you're in those areas.